Okay, uh, looks like we are live. Uh, live at five, as it were. I'm going to back down on the light a uh, tiny bit. Sorry, folks. Okay. Well, uh, a new day, isn't it? Uh, we just uh, heard the president uh, declare a national emergency. Probably a good, well, definitely a good thing. Uh, raises our level of awareness as to what's going on. I think it's so darn important that uh, we realize that this is a, a serious situation. It is unlike anything we've ever experienced, truth be known. Um, the you know, ba uh, ability of this coronavirus to spread is proving itself, as uh, was discussed uh, weeks and weeks ago. And the aggressiveness in terms of how serious a disease this is, is also playing out uh, as expected. Uh, interesting that one of the president's advisors today said that we are less well equipped in comparison to Italy. We know what Italy is going through. Patients requiring intensive care are out on the street in a tent. And uh, that's certainly a, a worrisome thing. So. Um, I think you, you've heard the notion of flattening the curve. What does that mean? It means not having a huge surge of patients all of a sudden. If we can try to uh, keep our heads about uh, ourselves and take measures to reduce risk, then maybe if we are going to get it, we're not going to get it next week or the week after, we can extend that time out so that it is uh, somewhat less of a burden on our healthcare facilities. Uh, we know that... Um, there are only a limited number of intensive care units, intensive type interventions, including ventilators, uh, available in the entire country. And it's times like this where we begin to make those calculations. Well, with all due respect, these calculations should be made before uh, the problem begins. As John Kennedy said, uh, the time to uh, fix the roof is when the sun is shining. So, uh, hello family from Sally. Uh, and I'm going to just update everybody with some statistics in terms of where we are. Um, total statistics uh, showing that uh, the curve is now trending upward in terms of total cases, uh, somewhere between uh, around 100 and um, around 130,000 uh, now reported. Uh, the number of new cases really spiked yesterday. Unfortunately, is spiking even higher. Uh, as it looks like, well, yesterday and the day before yesterday, as it looks at, at the, um, the 12th, uh, number of new cases in the day, uh, approximately eight to 9,000. Of course, these are all variable based upon people, countries reporting. Uh, we know that the, um, the rate of increase in terms of active cases uh, has increased quite substantially. We had a nice dip end of February, it looked pretty promising. That's not, uh, that's not occurring. Um, and uh, as we look at now, the percentage of uh, cases uh, outside of China is now at uh, about 44 uh, percent and the rest, 55 percent, are in China. So that number I've been following, as you know, that number is increasing. So uh, pretty soon, I'd venture to say in the next three or four days, there'll be more cases outside of China uh, than there are inside of China. So it's clearly, you know, a, a global event. Uh, what is concerning is the number of new cases has spiked dramatically in relation to the number of recoveries, which has remained pretty static. So, again, number of new cases reported uh, would be about 7,000, and the number of recoveries somewhere looks like about four or uh, three or 4,000. So uh, that um, is a, a bit of a worrisome uh, statistic. I'm going to answer some questions in uh, just a moment. Um, let me, uh, I mean, one question everybody's been asking is the transmission rate, transmissibility. We know of one description of an individual attending a meeting who may have transmitted it to um, as many as 50 people. Uh, on the treatment front, some good news. The drug Remdesivir, uh, made by Gilead, G-I-L-E-A-D, uh, was just described as uh, about 10 minutes ago, Japanese research revealed uh, that it looks like it helped dramatically according to the initial reports. That is a drug, it's an antiviral given uh, intravenously. We just learned that just before going on the air. Remdesivir, made by Gilead. Uh, in uh, uh, full disclosure, I will tell you that Gilead stock is part of my portfolio. 
So I want you to know that. Nonetheless, this news was just released, and I'm not re telling you that because of personal uh, interest. Um, all right, let me run through some questions, see if we can... Uh, why is it more aggressive than the flu? Num uh, from uh, Terry, uh, we lose more during flu season than we have this. Good point. Am I wrong? You are correct uh, that we, we do lose more in the flu season than we have lost, but the important part of that statement is so far. Uh, if the predictions are true that 40 to 70 percent of Americans will get this, that it is equally as contagious as the flu, the problem is that it is 10 or perhaps as much as 20 times more lethal. So, you know, all this people talking about, well, everybody gets the flu and it's uh, we don't get worried about it. The flu kills 0.1 percent of people who get the flu. Uh, this coronavirus is killing a two to three uh, or even more percentage of people depending on things like their underlying medical condition and certainly their age. We went through all those statistics yesterday. They have not changed in terms of increased risk based upon your age and increased risk based upon uh, underlying disease. So uh, we do know that the median age of the uh, disease right now is about uh, outside of China is about 45 years, uh, ranging from, a, from age 2 up until age 74 years. 71%, uh, uh, more than two-thirds of the cases are male. Why that is, who knows? Uh, women, uh, I just uh, did an interview uh, with Lisa Moscone, who wrote the book uh, The XX Factor. I might have it here. I don't have it here. But we know that the immune systems of women are different. Uh, that might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. Uh, in this case, somehow it's probably a good thing, uh, and as such, uh, maybe in some way uh, compare, um, protective. So um, we're going to look at, um, uh, give me one moment. Uh, okay, let me get back to some of these questions. Hi from uh, Marina Del Rey. I love Marina Del Rey. I was supposed to be there last week. That didn't happen. Um, I... Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you can do if you're not finding hand sanitizer. Now, I'm going to tell you uh, some ideas I've had. They may not be right, but you can go to the liquor store and buy 151 uh, alcohol, grain alcohol, and that is, by definition, half the number proof, so 75% uh, ethanol. Uh, and uh, that said, uh, that is what we are told is effective in terms of the virus. So if you want to have that in a spray bottle, what we do, put a little bit of lavender oil in it perhaps, uh, and that may do the trick if you can't find anything else. I think hand washing, underrated, but really very important. Uh, I don't go anywhere without a hand sanitizer, that's for sure. Uh, I don't need it here at home, but uh, when I go out, uh, I always carry hand sanitizer with me. Um, think about things where you're touching that other people have touched, like going to the gas station and grabbing the handle to pump gas for your car. Uh, how many people have touched it that day? Um, my husband is a, a driver for FedEx, uh, Kelly uh, Pfeiffer, and handles a lot of packages and boxes. Yesterday, you mentioned the poor surfaces can carry pathogens or coronavirus, let's say. Should he be wearing gloves? Uh, I would recommend absolutely he wear gloves and that he should sterilize those gloves, treat those gloves. Um, but the problem with wearing gloves is they are a non-porous surface. If you're having contact with service, touch your face, bad idea. So I uh, need to think about that. He cannot be touching his face if he's wearing gloves, especially if he's wearing them all day. I look, okay, thank you. Uh, hi from Tennessee. As the weather warms, does that help? Good question. We know that's likely associated with um, the seasonality of the influenza uh, virus, but does it help here? We don't know yet. Uh, we are seeing uh, outbreaks in temperate areas, and that if this, if the theory is right, that shouldn't be happening, and yet it is. Uh, and we are seeing it uh, outbreaks in northern climates as well, like even in Iceland, uh, for that matter. So uh, don't know. Um, I suddenly feel lightheaded and dizzy with a temperature of 90, looks like 95.5. Should I be concerned? I don't have other symptoms. I'm 34. Otherwise, excellent health. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, I would tell you the following. I'm not your doctor, but um, look, uh, you can be asymptomatic and be a carrier uh, or be infected with the coronavirus and anything in between. So you don't have to have a high fever and a headache and a sore throat and a productive cough 
uh, those are the classic symptoms that are now being described uh, to uh, you know be diagnosed with this disease so you may have it you may not um, unfortunately I don't know where you are but uh, you know getting tested here in America right now is something um, unlike how it is in 60 other countries around the world something that you can't readily do I learned that yesterday with somebody actually I'm very close to and uh, we were unable to get that individual uh, tested um, okay uh, at what temperature does the, the virus die good question I don't think anyone has the answer to that um, uh, I, I, I'm told or I've read that even uh, sheets and towels in the dryer at normal dryer heat is sufficient but I can't say um, let's see many have never been tested how many have had never tested I'm not sure uh, about that question Australia is going into winter when the flu that's uh, an issue uh, we know that it's certainly picking up in Australia, and that is uh, worrisome, that's for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, incubation period. I think this is really probably one of the most common questions that's been asked today. And here's what we know. The incubation period has been documented to last anywhere between 2 and 14 days. Um, there have been outliers showing instantaneous uh, infection and uh, or incubating for as long as 27 days. So uh, COVID-19, the current uh, understanding is two to 14 days, um, but, but there have been you know these outlying cases. The mean incubation uh, period, a study based on 1,300 or so uh, cases was three days. That's the average, the mean, uh, but um, the uh, mean incubation period in people observed from Wuhan, China, was significantly longer at 6.4 days. Um, it doesn't mean that you know you can watch somebody for three days because that's the average and therefore on the fourth day if you're thinking about having them come over they haven't had a fever they're fine that isn't a hundred percent certainly going to be uh, you know certainly in terms of that being helpful for you. Let me try to get back to uh, let me tell you that um, we've doubled the number of viewers since uh, yesterday and I'm very very pleased uh, to see that it means that uh, you're wanting this information and that you are finding it helpful I have going to move forward and do this every day at 5 o'clock Eastern um, always good to keep it uh, keep up to date with every disease that's for sure I mean we need to stay healthy especially now um, okay uh, okay uh, some of these I've answered before there's no rubbing alcohol in the stores. I understand that. Uh, wear a mask outside if you have one. It will prevent you from touching your face. Great idea. You know, we've been told wear the N95 mask or don't wear the N95 mask. I think you can argue both sides. The argument in favor of it would be if you are, for example, infected, wearing a, an N95 mask is a good idea for people around you. Also, I believe wearing an N95 mask around people who may be uh, possibly transmitting the disease in my opinion is a good idea but the pores on the N95 mask can trap the coronavirus and now you've trapped them in your mask what do you do uh, the idea there is you either get a mask with a exchangeable N95 centerpiece filter or you do your best to disinfect the mask by spraying it with something like bleach or alcohol, then you can keep using it. Uh, the trick is, though, if you're wearing a mask, then you touch the mask, bad idea. You've defeated the whole opportunity to uh, help protect yourself. Exposure to vitamin D helpful. Uh, data on that with respect to coronavirus. I've bumped my vitamin D dosage to 10,000 units a day. Why have I done that? Vitamin D helps immunity. Vitamin D helps the production of what's called an antimicrobial peptide. Uh, in your body that's called cathelicidin D and cathelicidin D is effective against bacteria and uh, viruses. Is it necessarily going to be effective against coronavirus? I don't know the answer to that. I've bumped up my D to 10,000 units a day and that's why. Um, yeah, so I, again I am not going to tell you that um, that the 151 from the liquor store is uh, proven to be helpful but look it's 75 percent alcohol proof take half the number whatever proof something is that's a percentage of alcohol we all know that so if you can't get alcohol at your pharmacy get a couple of bottles of 151 uh, and then if this all blows over then you can celebrate what can i say not that i would be drinking that because i wouldn't 
Um, anyway, you can add lavender, etc. That's exactly what we've done. Uh, 100 or uh, 100.4 or higher is what they're looking for for low-grade fever. Yeah, but some people don't get a fever at all. Some people get a very high fever, uh, you know, and some people um, have no symptoms whatsoever. Some people have died within one day. So it's all over the place. There are no uh, specific um, things that we could tell you that are, are you know, uh, going to be something you can hang your hat on for each individual uh, person. So uh, let me uh, just get to uh, a couple of other uh, topics that I think are very important. Give me just one moment. And I want to look at, um, just uh, stand by for just one second. Okay. Um, I, I have a very good website. It's called worldometer.info, worldometer, W-O-R-L-D-O, -O, meters, plural, dot info. Why don't I just write that in here? You know what? I think I'm going to just drag the URL and post it for all of you folks. This is a, one of the best websites I have found uh, in terms of great information. Uh, actually, it's not going to let me drag it. Stand by. We'll do the old control C, control V, and hope that works for the best. You all let me know that you've seen this. Um, let me know that my it came through. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a couple of other questions. I'm going to be back tomorrow. Uh, if you guys want to link my uh, podcast or Facebook live to yours, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm here to help. Um, uh, good question, uh, Mariette. Mariella Downey says, if 71% are males of the patients, could it be that women are asymptomatic instead? Or obviously some of them, because not all of them. Uh, that is a, a, certainly a possibility. I think it should be considered. Uh, what is the best protocol for people coming into your house? Step one, they don't come into, it. I'm telling you what we do. Nobody comes into the house unless you first wash your hands. That's not asking too much. Wash your hands with soap and there's paper towels right there and they could go into the garbage. Shoes off as well. We've That's been our practice uh, always, regardless of the coronavirus inspection, uh, infection. And uh, by and large, we're not uh, having people who have traveled recently um, visit anymore. Uh, we have some friends who are locals coming to dinner tonight. And you know, frankly, that might be it for a while. Um, you don't know where people have been and uh, their infectivity. Uh, I think that if you have people in your home, keep your distance. And uh, again, hand washing is key. Um, I have rheumatoid arthritis. Am I more likely to get that than a healthy person? Uh, I, I would say really depending on your treatment uh, that you're receiving. I've not seen the statistics relating rheumatoid arthritis or any of those type of autoimmune conditions to increased uh, risk. Uh, but I think, you know, what we're probably going to talk about here is the outcome, your risk of not just getting it, which is already between 40 and 70 percent. That's what we're all uh, experiencing. But the risk of you having a bad outcome, my sense is it would be worse if you're on immunosuppressive medication like steroids for the rheumatoid. Um, have you seen any effects from zinc or vitamin C? Uh, oh, that went quickly on this virus. No, I have not. Um, talked about zinc yesterday. Zinc is effective for reducing risk of rhinovirus. That's the common cold. Uh, is it going to be effective here? Don't have the answer for that. Uh, there's been one paper I read recently that looked at the role of zinc uh, that possibly it, it, it would not be effective here. So um, can someone catch it twice? Uh, don't know the answer to that. We suspect that that may be possible. So the notion that you get it like chicken pox and then you don't get it again uh, is not necessarily something that is supported at this point. Uh, I mean, I think some of us are probably feeling like, shoot, I just maybe I should just go out and get the darn thing, hope for the best, and then I can live my life. Hey, I, I've thought about that, but um, there's no real, um, no real data to support that that is a, a reasonable option or a course of action. Hi, Angie. Great to see you joining me. Uh, I will uh, keep you updated. Nice that you... you uh, Hi, uh, Rob. Oh my gosh, from Michelangelo Street. Uh, great, uh, very helpful. Um, great. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope Jennifer's great and Judy. Uh, thanks for checking in. It's awesome. Uh, it's great to reconnect. Um, uh, Sandra Rodriguez Tucker. What about glutathione? Not sure. Uh, you know, um, 
Glutathione is helpful for detoxification, antioxidant, and secondarily inflammation. The pathway whereby we amplify, uh, amplify glutathione is the NRF2 pathway. People have asked us about that. That also helps to, to um, reduce inflammation. Uh, Traducción en español, lo siento, pero es algo que no puedo hacer ahora mismo, pero tal vez mañana puedo tener alguien conmigo que, que puede uh, traducir uh, en, uh, para español. Um, tea tree oil, antiviral, yeah, uh, perhaps, is it effective here? Don't know. I'm a real fan of tea tree oil, but don't know necessarily here. Is COVID-19 airborne? Great question. Uh, CDC is looking at that. World Health is looking at that. There is some suggestion based on at least one report or comment from Harvard School of Public Health that it may be airborne. I mean, what we mean by airborne is as opposed to these respiratory droplets that can propagate when somebody coughs or sneezes. Airborne propagation of a virus um, is something that can happen. Uh, it happens with uh, uh, bacteria. It happens with tuberculosis, for example. Is it happening here? We do not know. Uh, do I take prednisone? No, I don't take steroids. Uh, but anyway, thanks for asking. Uh, good. There's my post just appeared on the website. Uh, look at the in the follow the feed, find my post, and uh, click that link. Uh, great information. Okay, everybody. Um, I am going to uh, holy moly look at all these questions. I sure hope that I've covered most of them. And. Um, uh, when do you know when you're no longer contagious? Let me end with that one. Uh, I think that, you know, if you look at what CDC is telling us, they're telling us that uh, you know, uh, uh, having uh, no temperature, no, no elevated temperature, everybody has a temperature, right? Uh, no fever, uh, measure twice. And actually, you know, the, the best way is uh, having a, a test uh, for the virus prove, proving negative. Um, hopefully that's going to be something that's available uh, to all of us very soon. Um, I'm going to join you all tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, with the latest updates. I am looking forward uh, to having better news and um, trying to see uh, you know the bright spots here. I, I do say that this remdesivir report that just came out just before I went on air uh, is encouraging. Uh, and again, with a disclaimer that I, I part of my portfolio is a company that makes remdesivir, but be that as it may, don't don't judge me. Uh, I am grateful that everyone's listening, and I will be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. That's it for now. Bye-bye.